Hey guys, welcome back to the Shipmate YouTube channel. This week we're talking all about reverse logistics. What is reverse logistics? Well, it's a lot like logistics, but in reverse. Logistics is the movement of goods or components uh, from the manufacturing process all the way up through transport to the end user. Reverse logistics is the exact opposite. It's a, a system in which things begin with the end user and they return their way back to the manufacturer or the retailer for refurbishment, disposal, or otherwise. Reverse logistics is really important because a lot of times when you're selling products or you're manufacturing products, there can be problems or even someone might just decide they don't want it anymore. But now you have this item out there in the ecosystem, right? It's out there, somebody got it, and you gotta get it back and you gotta get it in a sellable condition to be able to uh, you know, redistribute that product and not take a total loss on it. So when you're talking about reverse logistics, it usually starts with the customer. So there was a sale, there was a purchase, and the customer has the item. The first step is the customer decides to return that item, whether it be damaged, defective, uh, they just don't want it anymore. The manufacturer or the retailer has to figure out how to get this item back. So whoever's the one issuing the warranty or doing the recall, it's going to be up to them to get this item back because quite honestly, customers a lot of time don't want to go through a huge hassle and uh, retail is really, you know, really competed over the fact of making returns easy and simple. So generally, the customer will be provided with a return label and that will allow that good to be picked up by a third party carrier and re-delivered back to whatever facility the manufacturer or merchant chooses it to be. At that facility, the item will probably be inspected as to whether the item is in new condition whether the item can be refurbished, repaired, remanufactured, or whether it's going to have to be a complete and total disposal, right? Because some things are just not fixable and some things you don't want to fix, right? Like nobody wants to get like uh, used toilet paper or, um, you know, a toothbrush that was owned by somebody else before, or, you know, personal hygiene products, things like that. A lot of times, you know, those will just be disposed of. So once this is sorted out at whatever facility is doing the sorting, um, it will be up to the manufacturer or the retailer to have any goods that can be remanufactured, that can be repaired, repackaged, to have them re-put together for retail, right? Because you're gonna wanna sell some of that return merchandise that is in a sellable condition to recoup some of the losses from you know making that sale initially, shipping that out, and then having to take the item back. Because a lot of times that can lead to a pretty large loss because you paid twice to ship an item out and the customer is not giving you any money for that. So it's important to try to recoup some of these losses and that's usually done through reintroducing you know the sellable stock back into the market. So if somebody returned something because it was the wrong size, they didn't even open it, that'll go back out in the market. Um, Sometimes people will remanufacture something. Brake calipers are a good example of that. Um, you know, you'll get your old brake uh, calipers and you'll return those to AutoZone or whatever, and they'll remanufacture those, refashion them, and then sell them out to another end user. So, you know, things can be, like I said, repackaged, remanufactured, um, all different sort of things to get them back to being a sellable, usable product. And this is something that you see throughout the uh, sales ecosystem, whether it be online selling um, at your local grocery store, at a retail chain. This is something that everybody got to deal with because whenever you're selling, there's going to be returns and somebody's got to deal with that. So guys, I hope you learned something about reverse logistics today. Um, it's a really key part of logistics that's often overlooked because it's happened after that whole product life cycle. So guys, as you see, we just got past 2,000 subscribers and we need your help to get to 3,000 subscribers. So like, share, uh, comment, it really helps, or even subscribe. So thank you guys so much for watching 
and we'll see you next week.